Hey everybody, Brandy here doing my comments from my Stampin' Studio today. Today I've got a really cool watercolor technique tip to share with you all today using your re-inkers. Um, I made this pretty little card here and I'm going to show you everything that I did to make this card. So um, I'm going to turn the camera down below, but stick around because I've got some information to share at the end of the video. All right, one moment. All right, so we are going to do this card right here. And I used a Stampin' Up! set that um, I just got not too long ago. Um, it's in the Occasions catalog, I believe, and it's called Let It Ride. And I love this stamp set because I'm from Kentucky and we are here in Lexington, the horse capital of the world. So I saw there was going to be lots of different uses for this stamp set. And I'm also using some designer series paper from Stampin' Up. Um, they've got kind of a wood grain uh, packet in their current catalog. And so really did like um, that kind of rustic feel. So. Let's get started. I'm gonna gather a couple of supplies and then I'm gonna show you how I did that watercolor technique um, using uh, my re-inkers, all right? Okay, so a couple things we're gonna need, I'm gonna put this out of the way, is we're going to need the um, to stamp the image um, onto watercolor paper. And I'm gonna use my uh, Misty to do this. And the reason why um, I like to do this with the Misty is because watercolor paper sometimes doesn't sometimes doesn't get a um, a clear stamped image the first time around because it soaks it up so quickly. I really like using a stamp positioner um, tool in order to re-ink it um, to the level of darkness that I want the ink to come out to. So I'm gonna use some watercolor paper and, <clears throat> excuse me, I've got a bit of a cold, so I apologize if I uh, sniffle or <laughs> hopefully not cough into the video. All right, so I'm gonna set my watercolor paper down here. Oops, it's too big. Okay, let me go ahead and cut that. Hold on a second. Okay, I'm back. I went ahead and cut it down to a uh, four and a half, it was nine inches long, and this Misty only goes to, uh, I think, eight and a half, so I had about half an inch, half an inch too long. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my paper down there. I don't need to use the um, spongy part that comes with the Misty um, because I'm going to be using uh, foam uh, stamps. They're not gonna be photopolymer, so you only need this if you're gonna use the photopolymer. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and use my magnets to put the paper down. And I'm going to be die cutting this um, with some rectangle, um, I think that was it, yeah, some rectangle um, framelits. And so I wanna make sure that I give myself enough room um, to be able to do that. So I'm gonna, actually, it needs to go this way. Place that right, right about there. This is um, the clean stamp, which is pretty easy to pick up. Give it a little press, pull it back. Then I'm gonna use Memento ink. I love Memento ink for watercoloring. And I'm just gonna use the Memento black. Make sure I get that inked up really well. All right, and then I'm just gonna give it a nice press. So it's a little bit light and I want to re-ink it and by using the Misty, you're able to easily just re-ink it and it'll go back to the same exact position. If I did this by hand, I'd be a little bit disappointed that I wasn't able to get a nice, rich black color in there, which is what I'm looking for. So I'm gonna stamp it again. And that looks pretty good. Just gonna go ahead and give it a little bit more press down. Make sure I've gotten all of the stamp down. And that looks great. All right, so I'm finished with that. And while we're here and we've got our Misty out, we can go ahead and stamp the sentiment. 
I've got a little piece of scrap paper here that I'm going to use for that. And this is also using um, uh, <clears throat> watercolor paper as well. All right, so I'm just going to place that down. Boy, these magnets are so hard to get up. All right, and here is my sentiment. And actually, it looks like I smudged a little ink on that side. So I'm going to flip it over. Let's see if I've got enough room. Yeah, let's do it right there. Oops. Ah, there we go. All right, so I'm just, and I'm also going to be um, die cutting this out with a little framelit too. So I want to make sure I give myself enough room. Pick that up. Use my memento black. Yep, and it's a little white, so I'm going to go ahead and ink it up again. That watercolor paper really does soak up that ink, and so um, I find that it's it's just just nice to have this stamp positioning tool to be able to re-ink it the exact same spot, and it comes out a lot better. All right, I'll set that to the side, move my Misty out of the way. I love uh, the word Misty. My my first dog was named Misty, so every time I hear it, I think about that. Okay, so we are going to use two colors here. Um, let me sit down so I can sit a little bit closer. Make sure you can still see me. Okay, we're gonna use um, two colors. We're gonna use uh, the Stampin' Suede and the Early Espresso from Stampin' Up. Um, I will post a link down below to some alternatives in uh, some of the other um, ink manufacturers that you could use. Um, and I've got the reinker here for the uh, soft suede. And then I've got the reinker here for the early espresso. Now what I want to do first, you can do it either way, but what I like to do is to um, lay down the lighter color of the um, horse. And where did my design go? Yeah, there we go. Let's see if you can see that. So I, I kind of lightened um, the horse up and then I did a little bit of shading. And it doesn't have to be exactly perfect. It is watercolor, so it is gonna look a little bit of a, a messy look, but that's that's fine. So I'm just gonna put a little drop of reinker in this well. And all you need is one drop. And actually, um, this one has uh, reinker that it's still in there, so I don't have to uh, worry about that. And the other thing I did forget to tell you is that it's always nice to have a scrap piece of um, paper that you can kind of um, test your color on. So I've got just a little basic water brush here. It's from Pentel. And... Uh, I'm going to kind of put my uh, brush in there and kind of get a little bit of water in there. I'm going to test the color out here and see how I like it. And that's pretty good. And the other thing that you want to make sure is you've got a piece of paper um, down. So if you don't like it or if it's too dark, you can just kind of lift it up by using a paper towel. All right, so let's give this a go. I'm going to go ahead and color this in. And again, it's, oops, you know what? I did forget to do something. So sorry, let me put some paper towel on there. The Memento ink, even though it's good for watercoloring, I always like to um, dry uh, set it with the heat gun just to help it prevent from smudging. Now, if you add a lot of water to it, it may smudge. Um, so just be careful with the amount of water that you're putting down. And like I said, you always kind of want to practice on a little scrap piece to make sure that you've got the right amount of ink, the right amount of water. And if it's too dark, 
um, then you can always use your paper towel to pick it up. So, all right, so I think I'm good here. I'm gonna go ahead and continue to color. Just try to color inside the lines as best as possible. And when I see water starting to, to pile, to pill up a little bit, then I always use my paper towel to just kind of pick up the excess because what I don't want is uh, uh, the water to make the paper, you know, go kind of funky, so. Now I'm, I'm kind of running out of color here, so I'm gonna go ahead and go, go back and do this again. And it looks like it's smearing that memento just a tad, so I'm gonna go ahead and pick up that water. Just color it in as you like. And I think it's a little bit light for me, so I'm gonna try to add some more color in. This is super easy to do. And it doesn't even matter if you go outside the lines. Okay. I think I got that. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and try to empty that brush. All right, now I'm going to use the Early Espresso to uh, kind of give it some dimension. So if you notice that I've I've kind of highlighted the back side of his muscles and the back side of his neck as if the light is coming from this direction, and the light is on his face and his front, but then there's some um, some shadowing on that side of the horse. So let's see. I don't want to get it in the ink here. Let me move this out of the way. leave that right there see if you can see that all right so I'm just gonna color back here just lightly use my handy paper towel kind of go over that line where the muscle is right there side of his legs. And give this little bit of a dimension right there and right there. These little tick narks. And just being real careful not to press down too hard. Because one, when you press down too hard, you put a lot of paper or a lot of um, color down, but then you also put a lot of water down. So I'm trying to limit the, the amount of water that goes down. All right, that looks good. Now I want to go back 
and add some of that uh, soft suede in to kind of blend it in. <clears throat> Move this out of the way. Over what I colored before actually did a better job on that one than I did on this one. What do you think? Let's lift it up. Yeah. Hmm. So this one, you can see a little bit more striations um, as far as the separation of the colors, but I mean, and that still looks good, and that is definitely a look, but this one actually looks a little bit more blended in, so... Yay for me. All right, so now I'm gonna use some um, old olive reinker to do that little swash of uh, grass. And I have got plenty of inker in the well there, so I don't need to use the um, the reinker to add more. So let me just uh, clean my brush, get all of that soft suede brown color out. Gonna kind of add a little water there to get that re-inker re kind of activated again. Oops, looks like I'm out of water. All right, let's see if I've got enough here. No, I need to get some water. Hold on one second. Okay, come back. Sorry about that. Just ran out of water. All right, so I just added some water to the well in the brush. Add that in there a little bit. And so that kind of mixes it up a little bit. And I don't want that, that green to be so dark. So let's see here, that looks a little dark. That looks good. So I'm just gonna just kind of basically color in and do a little, little swash there. And that's it. Oh, I do want, hold on one second, I want to color his hooves. And for that, I used the basic gray. What? Oopsie. <laughs> I used the basic gray. And let's see if I've got enough ink well in there. Yeah, I've got plenty there. So let me just clean up my brush here. And add a little water, get it reactivated. There we go. So I'm just gonna add a little gray to those hooves. I want it a little bit darker. There we go. Dab it. Yep. All right. There we go. Okay, so my little horsey is done. I'll clean off my brush here. Close this up. Okay. All right. Hold 
split up for you to see. Yeah, I think I did a pretty good job. Practice makes perfect. And that other horse, this one was the first, first one I ever did. did. So, um, yeah, it just takes a little bit of um, practice and, you know, easy peasy. Okay, all right, so now I'm going to go ahead and uh, die cut that out. And I'm not going to do that on screen, so hold on one second. Well, before I do that, I do want to share with you all that I'm going to be using the new uh, rectangle framelits that Stampin' Up! has recently uh, put out. Um, my Favorite Things has something very similar to it that I will link in the, uh, in the, in the notes below. Um, but these particular ones that I'm using now is the Stampin' Up! brand. And I'm using um, my purple tape, um, which I love because it keeps the, uh, the, the, the die in place while I'm running it through the Big Shot. And I can already tell I've got it crooked, so let me redo that. And it does not pull up your paper, which I really, really like. And I just basically reuse the same piece of tape over and over again. I just kind of stick it on my Big Shot and um, reuse, so. so. There we go, and it just pops right out. All right, let me put that to the side. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is to create this background. And I'm using um, just a piece of their, um, um, I, I think it's called Wood Textures. It's in their current catalog. And I'm going to cut this down. And I'm also, but, I, but it is a little bit thin. So I will say that I tried this um, technique without putting a backing on it. And it was a little bit thin. And my twine, my baker's twine, kind of made it warp a little bit. So, just a little trick. Um, what you want to do is to cut this down to size. And I'll put all of the uh, dimensions um, down in the um, the PDF where you can get all of the instructions for this uh, project. Um, but I uh, also have discovered... This is really cool. So I usually will just cut my paper down to whatever size I need it to be. But sometimes I find that my paper trimmer um, either you know went a little wonky or whatever. I didn't quite get it straight. And when I discovered that uh, My Favorite Things actually has um, framelits, they're dies that are the exact dimensions of what most people use in terms of their cards. So, for example, this is a, uh, the dimensions is five and a quarter by four. And that's basically um, two, um, eight by, eight and a half by 11 pieces of sheet cut down and then folded in half. And so they have this um, stacked framelit there at My Favorite Things that basically is a quarter inch down and then a quarter inch down from that and so forth and so on. And so um, it comes like this. And um, there, are, there are some smaller pieces too. But this way I get the perfect cut every time. I just use the framelit. So anyway, I thought that was cool and I just discovered that. So thought it would share. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this down off camera and then I'll be right back. Okay, so I have die cutted that out. And so now I have the perfect size of backing that I need, or not backing, but designer series paper that I need. And the next thing I'm going to do is I've got a piece of uh, Nina White somewhere. Okay, found it. So I um, cut down a piece of Nina White, so basically the same size as my designer series paper. I didn't use the die, I just used my um, paper cr trimmer because it doesn't have to be exactly, exactly matchy-matchy. So I'm going to use my adhesive, and in this case I'm going to use, um, it's Stampin' Up's Fast Fuse, but they no longer sell this, but I discovered that Amazon actually has it. It's a... Um, I think it's a Tombow product. It's called Extreme. I will link down below for that as well. I love this adhesive. 
Um, and I'm really, really happy to find that I can find refills for it on Amazon. So that's really cool. All right, so I'm just gonna figure out which side I want. I think I'm gonna use this side. It's a little bit more rustic looking. And the reason why I'm putting this paper on top of this is because I want that um, to be a little bit stronger. Now, as you can see, I didn't really, you know, adhere it on exactly straight, but that's fine. I, it's okay. I'm going to use my uh, longer edge scissors just to trim off the white part. There we go. And the back side doesn't matter because that's what's going to be on the, um, that's going to be glued down to the card, the card base. Oops, looks like I got a little white there. Go ahead and trim that down. There we go. Okay. All right, so we want to kind of position where we're going to put everything to figure out our spacing. And that's about where I want it. So I want to do three rows of um, twine and I put little knots in them to kind of mimic like barbed wire. I tried looking online to see if there was a special kind of knot that horsemen use when um, with their horse ropes. And, and there is, but I couldn't figure it out. So I just did basic knots there. This particular twine that I used in this card and was some leftover twine that I had from a paper pumpkin kit. Uh, you can also use, which is what I'm gonna use today, is just some basic um, uh, twine, some jute twine. And that's what we're gonna use today. All right. Okay. So. I want to make sure that I tie my knots about the right spot. So I'm going to need about this much overhang to um, tap to wrap around the back in order to have it um, adhere to the back side of the thing. So I'm just going to go ahead and wrap myself a little knot here and tie it as close as or tight as possible, and then kind of get, gauge where that's at, and then figure out where I want my second knot. I think I want it about right there. All right, so while it's still loose, you can kind of move it around. But again, we're going to put that horse right there. And I think I want that not just so. That looks pretty good. All right, then I'm just going to use and leave enough to wrap around to the back side. So it's going to go like that. Oh. All right, so the next one, the next layer down only has one knot. Put that picture right there for you to see. So again, I'm gonna need that knot to be right about there. That looks about right. Cut that off. And I want to make my other knot about the same as the top layer, the top row. Move that knot down a little bit because I don't want it to be too close to the horse. That's about right. Okay, now how to adhere it. Let me cut off the excess here. Okay, so we're gonna flip this over. And again, I'm gonna use my fast fuse. Now you definitely want to use an adhesive that's gonna be strong. So I'm just gonna put a, a, a row here and a row here for now. And now I'm gonna Put the first guy on and just kind of picture where that horse is going. And I think that's about where I want it. And I'm just going to tuck it back there and kind of smoosh it down. That's a technical term, by the way. Smoosh it down. 
do the same thing on this side. All right, and I'm gonna take the one that's just got the one knot and place that down where I want it. Trim, tuck those tails back. off this excess okay and I've got kind of a funky piece there I'm gonna trim that off there we go and then I've got my last one and that's gonna go about right there I want to make sure that I've got them kind of evenly spaced out and that I've got enough room for the horse picture and then I've got enough room for that sentiment Oops, go ahead and trim that. All right, that looks about good. You wanna make sure that you're not bowing the, the card um, too much, but make sure that it's nice and um, steady and solid. Now, as I put this back on here, I realize mm -mm, this knot's a little bit too close to it, so I'm gonna have to lift it up and I shouldn't have I shouldn't have glued it down before, I mean, I shouldn't have trimmed it before I did that. So let me see if I can readjust. I can uh, see if I can untie this one here and move that knot over a little bit. All right, so I'll move it just over a bit. Make sure you can still see what I'm doing. There we go. All right. Trim it back. Okay. All right, let's see if we got enough room there. Yep, we sure do. That looks great. And then we got enough room for this guy. Yeah. Okay, so now that I've got that down, I want to put some more glue down. And if I can, I wanna go ahead and kind of make sure that those pieces are really stuck down. Because I don't want those coming up. All right, that looks pretty good. Okay, so this paper is the uh, My Favorite Things craft paper. I've already scored it. I'm gonna go ahead and fold it in half. Use my bone folder. And I'm gonna go ahead and adhere this panel to the card base. That looks pretty good. All right, now I am going to use some um, foam tape to, uh, where did it, here it goes. I'm going to put some foam tape around this part of the paper and then a little strip up here. I'm not going to put anything in the middle part because of these um, uh, pieces of twine. Check that fits. Yep, yep, that fits. Take that adhesive backing off. And position that where I want it. And give it a good push. All right, now I'm going to put some foam tape on here and lay that right there. Let's see here. Looks like I need to cut that in half. Just put that back on the 
roll. And there you go. Now, this kind of worked out because this back this backing here is a little bit lighter, so it kind of goes a little bit better with lighter um, horse, and this one's a little bit darker, so I think that looks great. All right, might want to add a little bit more glue there. Hold on one second. My Gina K to the rescue. Just gonna put some right behind here. It's wanting to lift up a little bit. I love Gina K. I love this pen type uh, way of being able to put that glue down. It's really nice. All right, make sure everything is up. I mean down. Yep, that looks great. All right. There we go. Again, when you do watercolor, it's not going to look the same every time you do it. But the more you practice and the more you learn how to um, anticipate what the water is going to do and how that's going to affect the color, um, the better your watercolor projects are going to come out. All right, let me flip the camera over. All right, well, I hope you liked this tutorial in how to use your reinkers to watercolor and how to create shading by using different shades of different colors. Um, also, love that we used um, the jute twine in there just to kind of give it a more of a rustic feel. I will be sure to link down below all of the um, supplies that I used in this project. Also, um, give you a link to the blog post if you're not re watching this on my blog, uh, where you can get more details and also um, download a free PDF with all of the dimensions of all the paper and stuff that I used today. All right, so next thing I want to talk about is our upcoming swap. Um, we have a swap that's going to be happening this weekend. It is uh, due to me by March. Mm -hmm. 9th, I think. 8th or 9th. Let me see. I don't have a calendar. Anyway, it's this Friday and today is the 4th. Is that right? Today the 4th? Yes. So, so Tuesday's the 5th, 6th, 7th. Anyway, you know what I'm talking about. So, um, if you're interested in participating in that swap, I'll link a, um, uh, I'll link to that information on how to get um, those uh, cards to me. It's a spring flower theme um, this month. And then also I have a Facebook group called Card Makers Card Swaps. And you can either um, search that in the search field and on Facebook, or you can also find the link down below. And um, you can participate in any of our upcoming swaps. So. I look forward to seeing all of your creativity. Um, I have a private Facebook group called SMSL, as in Stamp Me Some Love Stampers. And I would really like it if you tag me in your post if you decide to create this particular project because I would love to see how it comes out. All right, please do me a favor. If you thought this tutorial was helpful, please do hit the subscribe button and the like button and please make any comments down below if you want to see anything specific in an upcoming video. All right, life happens. I comment, stamp me some love. Take care and we'll see you at the next video. Bye-bye.